me than drinking like actual energy drinks that I usually drink. So, and also because it's not fizzy, it's really good for me casting because I drink fizzy stuff when I'm casting. Sometimes it isn't great for me all the time or drinking too much of it. So the fact it's not is great. Anyways, like I said, so that time is over. Let's do this. The top left hand side, our red Zerg is Namshaw. And to the bottom right hand side, our blue tower and player from XED Sports. This is Clem. Just got picked up by XED and is now on a team with Raynor. And uh, the fact that he's on a team with Raynor is kind of sick. The two youngsters teaming on up for the future of StarCraft 2. As we are going to be seeing this early game TVZ getting a roll in here. Who's everyone cheering for in the chat? I want to hear it from you guys. Are you cheering on Namshaw? Are you cheering on Clem? Let me know. And uh, see what happens. I'm going to wait a little on buy and see whether Wardy grows blue hairs or something. Man, I, I've been drinking this for like three weeks now. I started drinking it before I went to China or something, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's really freaking good. I love it. I, I honestly do. And again, I'm not being passionate just so you guys go and click the link and make me look good and stuff. It's genuinely because I believe it tastes good. Like like I say, anything that I'm sponsored by, I fully endorse myself. And then everything you guys talk about is a genuine reaction and experience with the product. Anyways, let's continue on. What's up, Vancing Cow in the chat? How are you doing? What's going on? What's up, Bad Rocks in the chat as well? How are you doing today, mate? Thanks for dropping by. As we are going to be uh, just heading in towards this uh, setup. I need to change this. Um, <laughs> I need to change this uh, command in my chat. Let me just turn my own channel but chatbot off, and then it can be a bit easier. Sorry, I just appreciate the chat's been spammed a little bit. Oh, sneak disable. Okay, that'll be a little bit useful for now. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, sorry for a little bit of chat spam, but uh, do you enter the giveaway? All right, anyways, we are going to be uh, seeing this Reaper coming across towards the upper left-hand side. Clem looking to see what he can get up to with this Reaper expand opening a factory on the way down as well. He has gone into a reactor behind this and now the second gas. Very standard Terran build order so far. Not really, really too crazy. And we are just going to be seeing... Just looking to try and get a Zergling or so as Namshaw will look to defend as best he can. Queen pushes that Reaper away out in towards the... Uh, third base location, and Clem does want to just keep this Reaper around, just so he can keep track of potential drones moving over towards the third hatchery. Just try and slow that down as much as possible. If you can stop the drone from making the third until link speed is finished, that's the best possible scenario. Because then, you know, once link speed's finished, there's no way you can delay it any further with just a Reaper. The more you delay, the better it's going to be for you. You can see that Namshaw is even going to commit a queen towards this position to get the hatchery down a little bit faster than the link speed finishing. Which is fine as well, and Clem does have to back away from it, but he'll actually loop around. He will just confirm the third base is up, which is nice to do as well, of course, because knowing that gives him just an idea as to what the Zerg is and is not doing. And now we're going to be having that Reaper Ooh, a little bit of trouble there, getting caught, but is able to keep on backing away off over the left-hand side. You're going to be seeing the uh, Cloak coming up for this starport, and we're going to be seeing a Viking on the way initially. We'll see if he does commit to the Banshee behind it. A couple of Hellions continue to come on out as the tech lab from Clem coming in on the barracks. Now, we saw Clem play against Raynor in Nation Wars just the other day, and he played a pretty good game. It's just his opening didn't really do enough, and he was behind from there, but he played amazingly afterwards, which does scare me a little bit here for Namshaw, if I'm going to be honest. And I actually casted a whole bunch of Clem in Go for SC2 about a month ago, including Clem versus Namshaw and Blackpink. If you guys did not see that game, you have to go check it out. It's on my YouTube channel. If you search, like, Clem... Damshaw Wardy TV, it'll probably sh show up. But also Clem Snoot from that same tournament was fantastic. Great matches from Clem back a month ago. Definitely worth checking out if you're looking for some extra StarCraft 2 later on. That's all available all available on youtube.com slash Wardy TV. Now Stimpak starts up, Cloak is still coming through, but it's a Liberator, so Cloak will be cancelled. It was already cancelled and restarted once, so that mind game continues here to keep Namshaw kind of in the dark and to continue kind of, you know, keeping them on somewhat the wrong path. I mean, the Spore Crawlers aren't going to be completely wasted, they can still be used to help defend against Liberators, for example. 
Namjan actually just doesn't even start spores. Now he does, obviously knowing maybe the usual timing of a Banshee, he delays them as long as possible. Two exit barracks are on the way up, and we will see a stim pack upgrade coming through as well. The reactor's starting to build up on this starport, and it looks as though this factory will swap onto the tech lab for some siege tank production. This barracks can take place on the reactor, and just siege tank marine that common set up here for the TVZs as of late. With the Ling Bane Hydra meta game out of Zerg still very uh, kind of prominent in the matchup. Siege tanks are pretty much just a necessity. Like, you cannot fight against Hydras without siege tanks. It just doesn't happen. And that's the moves that uh, are being made right now from Clem. Just start preempting that with the uh, setup that he has going. And there is the first siege tank. On the way, a third CC coming up as well. That's about to finish. The Liberator in the main gets itself a couple of kills. We'll back away and we'll take a little bit of damage extra. May not be able to siege up. Love that Namshaw's already relocating the Spore Crawler. But in Forchi, the Liberator doesn't siege up just yet. As Hellions are going to dive the third, but that's where the Zerglings are. They might just have to back away here. Maybe dive the natural. That's not where the Zerglings are. Clem doesn't take the risk. He's a little bit afraid of maybe where those Queens are. So he will just end up backing away. Look to try and maybe grab the Creep Tomb. But the Hellions are going to get surrounded. They go into the corner to try and keep themselves alive. But Namshaw will get the pickoff here. As this Viking is still going huge on Overlords. This would be its third Overlord kill if it gets it. It's going low. Queen comes in to help out. No transfuse available. Clem backs away maybe a moment too soon because the Viking could have got that kill. Unfortunately for him, he just doesn't quite get it. Again, not the end of the world, though. And as we are going to be seeing the uh, orbital. Just going to lift up and going to be coming down over towards the third base. So Clem, nice and quick to take this position. He's already got a good amount of Marines. His siege tank is up here as well. Very standard setup so far from Clem really in this TVZ. As we are going to be having Queens pushing creep sped forwards through the center of the maps and creep around the top side as well. Nam Shaw's creep looking fantastic actually. Getting in front of the fourth base already too. Obviously this is generally where you do want to take the fourth. This base just a little bit... Ooh! He is going to take this one. So I was going to say this one is a bit further forwards and it is easy for the Terran maybe to push towards. But it is maybe less abusable because what we have seen a lot of special comes to mind. Dropping siege tanks on this side and then dropping over here to harass the fourth base can be very powerful. And attack starts up right now. It's only Lings and Queens, and those tanks take a long time to go down. By the time the tanks fall, the Marines have gotten rid of all the Zerglings, so it's just Queens here, really, to fight. Obviously, they have some transfusions to work with, but they have to keep on running. More Lings are starting to stream in, but a few at a time, and Namshaw, this isn't looking pretty for him at all right now. Clem is going to be pushed away, but if this was a good fight. He may lose the Medivac, which would definitely be a big win for Namshaw at the end of this. I still like the trades that have been coming in here for Clem as his Liberator comes back in the main. It's now a 9 kill Liberator finding some insane damage as this game continues. Clem, good stuff, man. Really good stuff so far. Showing us why he is one of the up and coming Terran players of the European scene. Another set of Balance from Namshot starts to morph in. Some extra Zerglings as well, just the right hand side of this hatchery. Never siege tank coming forward. See these couple of medevacs too from Clem. Going to load up a few of those marines and start boosting forwards. He needs to clean up some of this creep. The more the creep he cleans up, top side, central, the more he cleans up, the better it will be for him moving forwards. He just lifts those marines up, no problem at all. And we're just going to be seeing him start to kind of again get the job done over here. Banes don't have bane speed yet, which is actually a huge delay. Now I'm sure forgetting that for a while. Eight and a half minutes, no bane speed. That's dangerous because it means these marines can kite backwards. But Clem does have to pay attention. This time around, he didn't pay attention for a moment or so, and that does somewhat hurt him. It's going to be seeing that uh, Overlord taking a little bit more damage once again here. Going to be having those couple of medevacs up top, getting ready to maybe jump in towards one of the uh, one of these bases, either one or the other. And we are going to be seeing the two two upgrades continue to come on through right now for Clem. So continue with that. That's a huge lead he has on those upgrades, by the way. About a minute or so in which he can hit the two two time three hive, and that's going to be so powerful. Two two times are powerful enough, anyways. When he's coming in with an upgrade lead. It's just so instantly good, and Clem takes down multiple Queens over here. He'll try and target down some Banes, but they're just a little bit too fast with Bane speed and on creep. And so he'll be forced to just lift up and relocate, but he can do so safely. The Hydras weren't in position, and obviously the Queens were taken down already. They have to lift up again, and it's a little bit dangerous, but he's still okay. Dropping back down to the low ground, but the Banes are about to finish morphing. Clem realizes there's not much more he can do. He's going to try and dive the main base with this next set of Medivacs in the top side. Just trying to control the map until his 2-2 is ready to go. He's getting the siege tank numbers up. That push is going to be so scary. 
And if he just slows Nemshaw down as much as possible until then, it's going to be even scarier. As Clem pushes forwards, I imagine he might even just go through this set of rocks and go straight towards this fourth base. You get a couple of tanks set up here, maybe one or two over here, and you push down this ramp. I actually don't know how you start to defend this base. It's such a difficult map to hold a fourth base on as a Zerg player, whether you take it here or over here. And that's the thing, I feel as though taking the space here now, you know, earlier, you know, earlier on it definitely helps you more because the siege tanks here, and you know, dropping over there hurts this space a lot more early. But later, I think this base becomes harder and harder to hold on to. But maybe that's the idea, Namshaw just says, well, if I hold this base early and get something out of it now, maybe I can give it up later and go towards this space instead, and then it will last longer for me in the game from that point onwards, when this base may be much tougher to hold, where it may go down a couple of times throughout the games. You see these marines are going to be uh, picked off a little bit there. There's going to be seeing some Lings, Banes, and Hydras. So letting themselves up, going in a few different directions once again. 2-2 two -two upgrades from Namshaw are about to finish up. And what's so interesting to me is that Clem did take so long to start moving forwards with 2-2. Two -two. You can see plus 3 started, you know, 30 seconds ago. That's 30 seconds he could have been across the map already. Big counterattack, great timing from Namshaw. Cancel on the Planetary Fortress. And Clem actually pulls back home to deal with it. Namshaw buys himself time. The more time he buys, the better it is for him as he sets up into the Ultralis Cavern. Namshaw is trying to improve his position here as that command center drops back down. SCVs will get back to repairing it. Another refine will come down off to the left here. Again, a couple of tanks siege up right now for Clem as we're going to be seeing Marines, Medivacs, and tanks coming through the center of the map. Still a lot of Zerglings off over to the left-hand side. Gonna be seeing this planetary is still not quite here already. SCV is repairing it this time around. The San Clem doesn't stop pushing forwards with his main army though. We'll have to lift this planetary once again. The fourth base is difficult for him to get up, but again, I really feel he can get some work done on this fourth base of the Zerg player. Deny this, you know, take an eye for an eye could definitely work out for him. Those links get pushed away over here. And Clem is setting up. He's also setting up for the later stages, though. The ghosts are on the way and extra starports coming down. I like the idea of him getting rid of this base, but he doesn't have to end the game right now. He has a follow-up to this, although those bays are going to get very good connections. Clem just a little bit slow to respond there for a moment or so, and that definitely hurts him as we're going to have to see these Marines splitting like gods right now if they're going to stay alive against this attack. He stims once more. He splits backwards. He's still somewhat on creep as the tanks do soak some main connections. It's enough. There's not a follow-up here to deal with those Marines. This hatchery, transfused to keep it alive. Another stim here could maybe keep it alive a little, get it rid of it. A viper, a duck comes in, and now that hatchery might still live. Wow, what a hold so far. Ling is still set up to the left-hand side. This time, the planetary might actually get to come up, though. The Ling's run in. There's less than them before. SCV's already repairing. The planetary will finish. Some units come back home. Clem doesn't get this base kill, and that's a huge defense from Namshaw. And the workers he did have to pull away, they just moved over here. They took another base already. And that's great for him. Is actually Clem losing some tanks at the moment. Namshaw played great in the last couple of moments here to be able to keep this base alive to distract Clem for so long. As we are going to be seeing those bio units. Having to be careful. Ghost coming forwards, though. The snipe's coming down. The first two ultras just disappear. Fighting before kindness is never a great idea, and that's a great example of it because even without the snipes, those ultras were taking absolute truckloads of damage from the bio units. Clem has still not got a lot of units, though, and I feel he's really kind of pushing his limits here. Still attacking forwards, lifts up the ghosts and saves them with a super low health medevac. Clem's playing some dangerous games right now. Tanks at home have not been brought forwards for quite some time, so he needs to bring those forwards once again here soon. Plus three melee, plus three carapace on the way from Namshaw. As we're going to be seeing more of this bio just gathering up together. A couple of medevacs as well, and these siege tanks also from Clem coming on forwards. Medevac goes over to the left-hand side of this hatchery is... Well, just still kind of sad. He's going to drop on a little bit of the creep space, and I'm sure we'll have a bit of an idea it's coming forwards. Those tanks are still set up here, so I'm not sure if these ultras can get much done. The snipes are good. One goes down, the other just about gets away. And Namshaw will just cancel the space. He's way too slow to respond to the attack he saw coming a long time ago. That's a bit of a weird secondary scan. No, he scanned elsewhere, I think. Either way, he's going to just go for a couple of drones here, try and get some damage. Lifts up, jumps into the main, and Clem is still just trying to be all over the place as he sets up in towards the Ghosts, the Tanks, and the Liberators. His later game setup is coming through here, and it's starting to look so very terrifying. Drops back down to the low ground once again. A few of those drones once more going down. Two or three of them falling. And these lings, they get picked off pretty quickly. So 
Again, this one single drop is getting a lot done. It's distracted enough to give Clem a position on the map again. Jumps back into the main base now. Right now, Namshaw just cannot take control of that single drop ship. It's caused him a lot more issues than it maybe should. Hatchery still low health from earlier. It's worth keeping in mind as the transfuse gets thrown on it. I mean, obviously, the you know the lower it is earlier in the game, the better it is now for uh, Clem to get rid of. Goes to get caught in a fungal, but the snipes were pretty good in general. The vipers go down, and Namshaw might be in trouble once more. Some uh, ultras come out. There's still some energy available. Even just the tank line here is so powerful, and these ultras just disappear. Another snipe on the hydralisk. It goes down, and just one infester hits the money fungal. Everything, guys. Wow. I'm sure with a fungal growth that may have just kept him in this game. Well, Hydra's, Ling's, Bane's, another Ultra coming up here, another Infestor or two as well. This Liberator from Clem just setting up 12 kill Liberator, having the time of his life at the moment. It goes in the front, gets taken down, but the Liberator tank line in this back high ground position is going to be so difficult to break with just Ling, Bane, Hydra, Ultra, because how do you run up this ramp? You don't run up this ramp with Ling, Bane, Hydra, Ultra. You kind of need Corruptors to start getting rid of the uh, Libs at least, to then maybe get the Vipers forwards just isn't going to happen and as Namshaw loses this base now he's actually reset onto four bases of his own this Liberator finally gets taken down but as Namshaw's reset onto four bases the fifth base from Clem begins to morph into a planetary fortress boy oh boy off and away we go Clem is really macroing up here into these later stages so powerfully at the moment a couple of Liberators setting up once again Cloak for the Ghost coming through obviously something that you have to upgrade once again nowadays Ooh, two ghosts at the front go down very quickly. A lot of bio sim and Forza to help out those Liberators doing what they can. These Ultras get taken down, though. The Liberators don't seem to care. They're actually starting to pick off Vipers. And Clem has broken through this position yet again. He's going to continue just slow pushing forwards, I think. Bring those tanks forwards. I mean, there's no reason not to. The scan's there. He just has a snipe on the Ultra, but no second and third snipe to get the kill. Snipe on the Queen will grab the kill as well. Energy for a unit. Yes, please. Any day of the week. As our Terran players now segregating our Zerg away from the left side bases and the right hand third base. GG! Clam takes the game and he takes out Namshaw here in the go for.